Welcome back guys, welcome back to part number six of my chicken coop build. Now this will be the final part of the build. As you saw on my last video, I painted it, put the roof on, the shingles, and today I'm gonna build the door, the ramp, and all the final touches, and also give it a second coat of paint. Here I am by the chickens, the standard chickens and the silky chickens, and look how nice that coop is turning out to be a lot nicer than expected now i just finished the first coat of paint except for the trim i need to paint the trim here shortly and i'm here with a snack and that's why they're so excited it's late sunday afternoon and it's getting a little chilly temperatures about 40 right now and dropping now next week i'm gonna plant my garlic i have a lot of garlic and i can't wait too long i can't wait until the ground gets too hard uh, but i think i have time welcome back guys it's the next day and today i'm building the doors once i'm done with the doors i want to go outside and give the uh, coop a second coat of red paint and as you can see now the door is mostly done i've already installed one decorative bracing here and i'm about to do the other one the other one the second piece is going to be actually two pieces it's, they're gonna come they're gonna start here from the corners and then they're gonna meet here and that is what I'm about to do now what I do is I use these clamps to hold that last piece of wood in place and then I'll trace the lines here and there I'll trace the lines here as well and here and here then cut it and it'll fit perfectly in there kind of like butter will it work I don't know we're about to find out It's okay. Oh ho! Piece number two. Perfectly. Now I have to use screws from underneath. I'm gonna use an inch and a quarter screws and screw from the bottom. Not from the top, from the bottom. That way you can't see them. Since I work a lot with screws, from now on I'm gonna go ahead and buy the five pound boxes versus the one pound box. See this one? I'm almost out. This is an inch and a quarter screws and i rather have the big boxes so they'll last for a very long time okay where is it right there yep that was correct it's hard to see from underneath but you can feel it by putting your one hand on top of the wood that you're about to screw in and getting a feel for it getting a feel for where it is i wish these things were magnetic that would be nice okay here it is now i'm going to coat it with primer And maybe tonight, after it dries for four to five hours, I'll put my first coat of red paint. But it's looking good, yeah, I like it. So I'm gonna use a brush to prime it. And this is a chicken coop door. And the main door. And I already have some plastic underneath, just in case I spill anything. And yeah this is just going to take a few minutes let it dry and then paint it with red no need to use a roller because you know this is just so small that it's not required it's a lot of cleaning if you use a roller as well so yeah i want to do it a lot faster Here's the door, it's done. I'm gonna let it dry. Well, it's almost dry already. It's been a half hour. 
And I'm going to go ahead and do the second coat, red coat, on the coupe. Then I'll come back and I'll do the first red coat on the door itself. Now the trim, it's all going to be white and that I'll, I'll paint that at a later time. So here's the first coat that I did yesterday a red. Do I need a second coat? Nope, not really. But I want something durable. It looks nice. Now this is primer. I haven't painted that yet. I haven't painted any of the trim yet. It's all primer. But yeah, the uh, first coat looks very, very decent. Let's make it look better. So I put some blue masking tape all the way around the trim. It's just going to make the job a lot easier. It's about right now. It's about three o'clock and we have like two and a half hours of sunlight left. I want to get this done as soon as possible. Guys, I am done with the red, and it's a thing of beauty. That second coat took a lot less time than the first coat, but it looks really nice. It looks deep and rich. I am impressed with this color. This is not my new favorite color, barn red. Do you guys agree? Do you like this color? I think they do. The painter's tape just made it a little bit easier. I'm getting there. All right guys, so it's the next day that the door was painted. I have two hinges and a latch and my wife is gonna help me install it this morning. Okay, the moment of truth. And it's a little cold, it's about 34 right now. Keep it down. I'm trying to work here. All right. I have three shims on the floor here. <laughs> now that's funny. I'll do the bottom first. Maybe I get that even. <laughs> oh, Right, guys the door is on it isn't perfectly straight and well here we have an even line all the way down not so much up on top but I have a way to fix this but it's, it closes see that it closes and now I'm gonna put a latch right here And there it is guys the latch is on now I'm gonna work on the door stops all right guys so here are the door stops and the instructions say to do those door stops before the door 
but I like to do it the other way around. I like to build the door, install the door first, and then do the door stops from behind. And that way I can press the door stops against the door. Now, how am I gonna do that if my wife has already gone, I'm about to latch it locked. You'll see in a minute. All right, guys, so I tied a little line to the latch, and then I'm gonna wrap it around here right there when I install the door stops but obviously this is going to be on top of the door stop okay let's test it there we go it's locked so if I pull on this string this door is supposed to open will it open ah <laughs> look at that yeah, my wife went to Hannaford at the supermarket up here in upstate New York, and that's at least 25 minutes one way and 25 minutes back. I do have my phone in here in case I can't get out for whatever reason, in case of emergency. So, let's do this one more time. Yeah. This is kind of fun, isn't it? All right, the first, okay, let me wrap this around here. The first door stop I'm gonna install is this one. Okay, is this the right? No, this is, this is the one for this side. Okay. I want it touching the door frame. And I'm going to use four screws to screw it in. Oh, it's kind of loud inside. All right, door stop number one is installed. And I can barely see any light coming from the other side. Perfect. All right, again, I'm still safe. Okay, I can still get out. Let's go for the next door stop right here. This is turning out to be a nice little project. Kind of like an echo in here, isn't it? That's too low. Okay, let's do this again. I have the top plate and the bottom plate ready. Okay, the door stops have been installed. Yep. Now I can move on to something else. It's a little uncomfortable here, but now on to the coupe door. Oh, it's gonna look good. All right, do I want it to open that way or this way? Hmm, I think I want it to open that way, kind of like the other coop for the big chickens. Again, I have shims under it. Oh, and by the way, the door stops inside, they are one by threes, okay? And I'm also gonna have to put door stops behind this door in a few minutes. But the hinges here, these are small because the door is tiny. These are two inch hinges. The door has four inch hinges. Uh, I got the wrong bit here. Let me get the right one. Yep, this is a Phillips head drill bit. What's up, Silkies? They're here, by the way. On the other side of that camera. They're just curious. The little ones, not the big ones. 
as you know I have three older silkies and six younger ones the coop door is done I can lock it I can open it and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the door stops on the other side but it's looking great okay now for the hinges to the nest box lid so I'm gonna leave about a quarter inch space between this piece of a uh, trim and the lid that way you can lift up the lid there should be a little bit of space just about a quarter inch I'm not gonna fasten all the screws just yet I want to test it I'm just gonna do a couple Check it, I got the space. All right, before I fasten it completely, I wanna test it out. Yep. It opens and closes just fine. So now, I'm gonna go ahead and put all the other screws in. All right, all right, girls, when are you gonna start laying eggs? All right, guys, for my next trick, I'm gonna install a vent. You can install a three inch vent, kind of like what I have on my other coupe, but this is a four inch vent. And I'm gonna do two, one here and one on the other side. And you want them high, you don't want that vent directly where the chickens are roosting because if any uh, drafts hits, hits them it could be bad in the winter especially when the temperatures fall below zero so you want it high up in the coop both of them facing each other that's what I'm gonna do here so I think I want it here and make sure that there are no studs on the other side no obstructions and then what you're gonna do I wanted to make a mark. I don't have a pen or pencil. There we go. What you're gonna do, is you're gonna get a four inch hole saw and you're gonna drill your hole. You're gonna do two, I'm gonna do two, so let's begin. Might be easier if I use a ladder. There we go. We have a perfect four inch hole and this is gonna fit in there like so there we go check out that hole perfect now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a little bit of wood glue because with the winter high winds and pressure they may pop out that happened to me on the other coop last year I couldn't find it in the beginning, but I found it in the snow. So with the louvers facing down, I'm gonna go ahead and install it. That's it. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay guys, the other side is done. And here's the front side. Okay, here's the vent from the inside, and here's the other one. Now, all chicken coops need ventilation. I suggest a minimum of a three inch, and possibly a four inch, kind of like what I did. 
as high up in the coop as you can, and they should be facing each other. There's that vent. Here's the roost. Let's just say that the vent was down here. If that draft hits the chickens when they're roosting, it can kill them, especially in the winter when the temperatures drop to like 20 or 30 below zero. Okay, so you want that vent high up. I should save these for something. I don't know what yet, but I could put them to use sometime in the future. Hmm. I never used one of these things before, but this thing is off the hook. I need to build a ramp. But before I can do that, I need to move the fences back this way, maybe about a foot, maybe two. And I do have the space to move it back a little bit. And that's my next project. Okay, so fence number one has been moved back to maybe about three feet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the silky fence by about two or three more feet as well. That way they have more space. Check this out guys. It's like a new door on a brand new car. So I am going to remove only two T-posts and move them all the way back against this fence. And that should be okay. Yep. Maybe add a little bit of uh, PVC fencing. Let's begin. And the silkies are liking their extra space. Now I'm gonna go and build the ramps. Well, this chicken ramp, I have two two by fours. These are pressure treated with a 30 degree miter. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it has a 30 degree miter. Okay, so the next step is you're gonna cut six pieces of boards. These are one by twos. You're going to put them every six inches on center. And that's how you're going to make your ladder. I'm going to use two inch screws to put it together. Where's that other one? Okay, here it is. All right, six inches on center. Just to make it easier. This one split, but I have an extra one. All right. There we 
There we go. There we go. Let me tell you, getting these clamps was a great idea. You should always have band-aids around your homestead or shop because you will cut yourself all the time. Well, not all the time, but every now and then, and it's, good, it's a good idea to have them around just in case, like today. I'm gonna use two screws to fasten it right there. See, that's where the 30 degree miter comes in. I want to make sure that the door opens and closes. Yep, perfect. Wow, that is nice. It's looking like a real luxury checking coop all right so what do I need to do now I'm gonna do two things but I do have to mention that these chickens all the silkies will be sleeping inside tonight so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean out the floor inside I'm gonna install linoleum not vinyl Lin linoleum and vinyl are two different things I have always heard that vinyl is toxic so I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use linoleum. And then I'm going to fill up the floor with either straw or pine shavings. And then they're going to go in. I'm going to lock them up. I'm going to lock all the chickens in tonight so they get accustomed to uh, the coop. Because if I don't grab each one and put them inside, they're never going to go in. I can leave this door open for three or four days and they're never going to go in. But I'll make sure that they are inside tonight. All right, guys, so I just cut a piece of linoleum inside the garage, and I cleaned this up a little bit as well, and I'm ready to install. But first, why linoleum? Well, well, once I install this and I add the pine shavings or the straw or what have you, it's going to be a lot easier in the future for me to clean that stuff up together with the chicken poop. So, yeah, even though this is probably not required, it's a small, it's a small coop and the floor space is not a really big. I could probably clean it out in just a couple of minutes, but this again will protect the floor and make it easy for me to clean. So you want to see what color I bought? Are you curious? Well, glad you asked. Yeah, there we go. This is going to go in there for my silky mansion. They're getting this floor. All right. Let's go ahead and put it in there. Now, I cut it a little bit bigger than what I needed. And tonight, I'm going to um, set it in place, cut the corners a little bit so it fits in there nicely. And then add the pine shavings. And tomorrow, I'll come back and trim it a little bit because it's getting too dark right now. But I want to make sure that they sleep here tonight. Right now it's going to fit okay, but in, I'll make any adjustments tomorrow. Yeah, I should be using a pneumatic stapler. But I'm gonna use this hand stapler just to hold it, hold it in place. And then tomorrow or the day after, if it doesn't rain, I'll come in with a pneumatic stapler. I want this to go up the wall like so. So I'm just gonna slice this up a little bit here on the corner. See that guys? I know it's kind of dark. You just make a, a, a little slice here on the corner and it fits in really nice. So let's see. Yeah, 
yeah, it'll hold it temporarily. It's getting late. I'm hungry. It's getting dark. be able to trim it tonight I don't have to wait till tomorrow you know what will be nice here a block of wood give me a second all right I brought a light just so you guys can see what I'm doing and this is what I mean by a block of wood you press it against the corner that way it goes down and it's a lot easier for you to set it in place and then staple it The staple, some of the staples are not going in all the way. It's not a pneumatic stapler. I'll do that some other time. All right. Looks good enough for government work. Yep. Ah, ah, yeah. All right, final touches. Yep. Oh, oh. I'm happy. Chicken's gonna be very happy to have a new floor. All right, guys. The floor turned out beautiful. Check it out. It's better than my floor. Okay, now I'm going to add pine shavings. Okay. I need to go out and get more pine shavings tomorrow. But I think I have enough for today. Okay guys, I'm done. Check it out. Even the nest boxes have pine shavings. Now, I prefer pine shavings over straw. Straw is a little bit hard and they can't really kick it around too much. But this, the pine shavings, yeah, they do perfect with that. At least the big ones do. And I'm sure the silkies will be good too. Now, they're out here tonight. It's, uh, they're gonna go to bed in about an hour. I'm, I don't wanna grab them right now and, and lock them in. I'm gonna wait till they go to bed and then I'm gonna put them in there and lock both doors. They're gonna be nice and warm tonight. And hopefully tomorrow they're gonna be very, very happy with their new home. Once they wake up and notice where they are, they're gonna love their new space. I'm not done with this coop yet. I still have to do insulation. And I believe that's what I'm gonna do tomorrow. I'm gonna do insulation on the walls. Okay, it's pitch black. Let's go move them silkies. Yeah, it's about 6.30 p.m. And they should be in bed by now. Here's the first two. Welcome to your new home. These are the smaller silkies. These silkies are warm. The last two. They don't know what to make of the uh, situation. All right, guys. Good night. We'll see you tomorrow. So it's the next morning. 
It's a little cold, it's about 31 degrees right now. We got a little frost, as you can see on the ground. Let's turn the silkies loose this morning. Let's see how they did. All the other chickens are waiting for me. Why? You got it. I got a snack. How did you guys do? Okay. Once out, I just go in. Oh, here comes the second one. Let's go in this side. Oh yeah. The three, two big silkies left to coop. That's the last one. He's on the steps right now. There's a little ice on him. Oh no, there's another one. All right, that's the last one. My number one's gonna be the last one. And the other one can't figure out how to get down. That is funny. Okay, Hefe, keep it down. It's too early. It's only about 6.30 a.m. Come on, come on. Let me shove them. Come on. Get down, get down. There we go. Success. Yeah, so that makes me and the chickens happy. And the next thing I have to do is add this insulation to the walls. It's not very thick, but it's something. At the beginning of the series, I purchased acrylic latex paintable caulk as per the uh, list of materials right here, caulking. Now this is probably a little bit too much. So I'm using a smaller tube. A lot of you already have this at home, so this will do. Man, it's getting cold lately. Okay, for the caulking, you wanna do your windows, your door, basically, any trim where water can get in, you can add caulking, usually top, the sides. I never do caulking on the bottom because if water gets in there somehow, it needs a way to escape. The same for this. You see the trim for the main door? I'll caulk the top, the sides, but not the bottom. That's my personal preference. Yeah, you really don't need a whole lot of caulking. Very minimal for this kind of uh, a coop. Okay guys, so this next step is totally optional. I'm gonna insulate the coop with double reflective insulation. Now I got this idea for Meyer Hatchery. This is not included in the plans. You can insulate it many other ways, but I chose this way. So I'm gonna go out to the coop with a pair of skizzers, start cutting it. All right, so I'm gonna measure this wall and do this one first. All right, this is 22 inches wide by 44. Okay, let's cut our first piece. Oh yeah, it's getting late and it's getting cold. Oh. Let's see if it cuts easily. Yep, too easy. All right. It installs very easy. There we go, guys. I cut about a half inch longer than I needed for each side, and it came out nice. It's, it installs super easy. Now you can use quarter inch staples or three eighth inch staples. 
I will not use a half inch. Half inch are too long. But quarter inch is working perfectly for this application. I've decided to use a flat surface and this piece of plywood is my ticket. Oh yeah. Much, much better. Alright guys, so most of that wall is completed. I like the material, very easy to work with. Now I'm going to do the rest of the coop, but I'm going to do that off camera. And I'm going to do up there as well. This wall, that wall, and obviously the wall closest to me. But I want to do that on camera because this video is probably getting too long. And I may finish this tomorrow. But I will show you the uh, end result in a future video. And uh, I want to do a couple of other upgrades to this coop. And uh, stay tuned. But now let's go inside and I want to close with a couple of uh, thoughts about the whole coop build. So what do I think about the plans? They're very, very good. They're from a company called Morgan Creek. Morgan Creek Plans. And I'm going to link it below. I bought these plants from Etsy, however, you can go directly to their website and buy it off of their website instead. And I think they were very, very accurate. There's only a couple of things that I did a little different, but those were mostly personal preference, like the insulation is optional. I learned that from Maya Hatchery. The linoleum is optional as well. I've seen other YouTubers do that. And once you throw in the straw or the pine shavings, it's a lot easier to clean it out. Now, I'm gonna do a couple of little upgrades over the next couple of weeks and I'll show you those later. The only thing I did different here, instead of putting the door stops first, I put the doors first and then I did the door stops. That's a personal preference. If you are a professional carpenter or you worked with uh, plants like this before, then you probably have a better way of doing this. And going by these plants, you know, for someone like me, that's inexperienced, yeah, they helped out a lot. Now I do advise that you should have a little bit of experience working with wood and maybe roofing, even though the plans are very accurate, very detailed, it does help having a little bit of experience. And I do have a little bit of experience with uh, woodwork. And because back in the old days, when I lived in South Jersey, I had a couple of properties and I always, ended up doing repairs to the roof or to a wall, what have you. So I have all the materials required to do this coop. I've already had them. I've had some of these tools, as you already know, I've had for probably over 20 years. Now the walls the, uh, that I painted bomb red, as you notice, the, the paint that I bought was self-priming. Uh, so I didn't need a primer there. By the way, I don't know the people at Morgan Creek Plains. I just found them at random uh, when I was looking for plants at Etsy. But again, you don't have to go to Etsy. You can go straight to their website. And a lot of the materials, like the windows and some of the hinges, you can either find them at Home Depot, Lowe's, or your local hardware store, or they sell them through their website too. If you click on the link to purchase a window, it'll take you right to Amazon where you can order it from. However, uh, when I purchased my window, they didn't have the white window available, but I'm perfectly fine in ordering the brown one. The brown one looks nice and it opens and closes perfectly. Oh, and by the way, the whole build took about two weeks, you know, three hours there, four hours here, maybe five hours one day. So it wasn't like eight hours a day or anything like that. Now, if you have a job, you have a family, obviously it, it may take you a little bit longer than what it took me. All right, guys, so this video has been kind of long and uh, I'm gonna cut it here and 
Any, any upgrades I do to the uh, coupe over the next uh, couple of weeks, I'll show them in future videos. But tomorrow, I think I wanna do garlic. I wanna plant garlic because it's getting way too cold up here. And before it starts snowing and the ground gets hard as a rock, I wanna plant garlic. So with that guys, I hope you enjoy this series and I wanna wish you all a good morning, afternoon or night, wherever you are. We'll see you tomorrow, bye.